Right now then, let's let's talk about string handling techniques. I'm going to break this down into four different sections. I've put the little sections titles on here. First of all, what is a string? So let's put that title on there. Nice. First of all, let me define a string. This um, sometimes strings are called literals as well. Um, because you put them in quotes. I'm doing air quotes, even though you can't see me here. So Python is cool. Notice that it's surrounded with um, with two quotation marks. In this case, I've used single quotation marks. Um, uh, it, uh, well, uh, we'll look at that anyway. Now, we'll look at an alternative to that in a second anyway. Now then, let me prove what um, this string is. If I do list quote, you'll see that it breaks up that um, string into a series of characters. Now, I might you might remember way back when we talked about data types, uh, if you've watched the video on data types, obviously, that uh, Python doesn't have a character data type explicitly. What It, it basically is just a single length uh, string, a string with one character in it. Um, this shows you that actually uh, a string is um, a list of characters joined together. Okay, so let me just investigate a little bit the... Um, the use of the quotation marks. I think this is fairly important that you get ahead around this. There's a good reason why that I'll explain to you in a second. So I use single quotes up in the first line that I used up there on this line here. I use little single quotes there. So if I just change that and use double quotes, Python, oops, spell it right, is, oops, spell it right, cool, oops, spell it right. Could be looking at the keyboard. Double quotes at the end, you'll see that actually that's exactly the same. If I just print the quote out, you'll see there. Now, interestingly, Python prefers to use the single quotes. It doesn't really matter whether you use single or double quotes, as long as you don't do this. So, um, Python is cool. As long as you don't do that, because that'll give you this really funny error. It says end of line, EOL stands for end of line, while scanning string literal. Basically, it's looking for the last single quote and it can't find it. And in the same way, quote equals Python is cool, exclamation mark. If I put a single quote there, you'll get the same error, end of line, while scanning string literal, because it is trying to find the matching double quote at the end, and I haven't typed it before I've pressed enter. Now, why is this important? Okay, there are situations where you might want to include single or double quotes within the string itself. So let me show you an example. Quote equals single quote. He said, what? Right, he said what? No, that's wrong. <laughs> the intonation's wrong there. He said what? Um, right, okay, so I've included double quotes in here. So I've included a double quotation mark. But notice what I've done is I've surrounded the string literal with single quotes. That's absolutely fine. Okay, that works. And it prints out the double quotes for me. The other time, probably you might use it more often than not, is including apostrophes or single quotation marks inside the string as well. So it's, for instance, time for the party. Woo, time for the party. Uh, sorry, quote. Now you'll notice it's put the single quote in there. There is a different way you can do this as well, using something called an escape character. But if you can get away without using escape characters, it's probably better at this stage. An escape character is a backslash. So basically, um, what am I doing? Basically what I'm saying is to Python, ignore the next character. So if I put a backslash in a string, then I ignore the next character. The question you might ask is, how do I put a backslash in a string? Then you just do a double double backslash, and it puts the backslash in anyway. That's a that's a different video, probably. Um, it's time for the party, right? Exclamation mark. Now I can do a single quote there. You're not getting no errors, and you're not trying to print it out. I get the same output as I did before. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either use mix the quotes up, or you can use an escape character to do it. Right. Let's swap over to the canvas for a second. I just want to talk to you about the structure of strings. And exactly what it, how they're formed, how they're structured. Now I've used the same. Uh, oh, remind me when we get back to the canvas. I need to reset this. Um, the quote mark to quote back to Python is cool again because I'll forget otherwise. You know what it's like. Um, right. Okay. So you'll see here what I've done is I've put each of the letters in the string into a box. I've numbered them. Now this is absolutely crucial that you that you remember this because the number of times you will get this wrong. If I had a penny for the number of times I've got this wrong in my program in life, then I would be a very rich man. Man, rich, much richer than I am now. The first position in a string has an, a reference, or it's called an index, actually. It's called an index zero, right? Sometimes, and I've been in arguments with people this, uh, with this, you can call it the zeroth position. Zeroth position as opposed to the first position, the second position, the third position, and so on. Sometimes you call it a zero 
indexed string or list. Um, okay, I can't stress enough that the the first, the very left hand position in a string always starts numbering at zero. I cannot stress that enough. The implication of this is that the last number over here quite often ends up being one less than you expect it to be. So it's actually one less than expected. Because if you count the number of characters in there, and another pitfall you might fall into with this as well, is that you'll miss these spaces out here. There are actually characters there. There are two characters there that people miss out when they're counting them um, because they don't think spaces are anything, but they are. They're characters in, in all programming languages. So you'll notice that if I say, if I ignore that top line and I say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, there's 15 characters in there. There is, but you count them from 0 to 14. So it's 0 to 14. That's right, not 1 to 15. That's wrong. Okay, now this has, again, massive implications. And the reason you need to know this is if we swap back to our canvas again, what did you have to remind me to do? What did you have to remind me to do? You have to remind me to reset the quote to this. So I'll just do that little trick where you do that. That's great. Thanks for reminding me about that. Is that when you're, you can access values from um, the string uh, by doing this. So quote, square brackets, crucial look square brackets zero if i do that this gives me a capital p swap back to my canvas it's that character there okay it's the capital p at the beginning that's in position zero now then if i go for quote 14 i should get an exclamation mark which i do remember swap back to my canvas again you'll find that 14 is the last position there not 15 which is the one i would have expected to do uh, to find if i was doing it that way right again let's have another quick look at what happens if i try and access a position that's not available so if I quote 15, say, remember the square brackets, um, I get an error. You'll see this error quite a lot. Please read the error messages if you get errors like this as well. String index out of range. It means it's too big. Conversely, it might mean it's too small, although you can use negative indexes, but I ain't going to go into that now. Ask your teacher if you need to know. Right. The other thing you need to know is about string slicing. Right. Okay. So if I just pop back to my canvas for one second, if I want to extract out of this string um, one of the words out of here I can do that so if I want the word Python and I want to take that out of the string there I basically want to be able to tell Python to give me character 0 right through to character 5 okay so remember those two numbers 0 and 5 let's swap back to my script again and let's try getting those now you can quote square brackets you can specify a start and end position in here so if i do quote zero what was the number again and then put a colon between it and then i put the number five and i put another uh, square bracket at the end what this is telling python is start at zero and go up to five let's have a look what happens at, oh it's missed the n off right the one thing that will trip you up, and the reason you need to know this, is because if you're ever trying to extract values from a string, you need to remember to use the value above the last one that you need. Don't ask why. It's um, it's just one of those idiosyncrasies of Python that you need to remember to do it. So, for instance, if I want the whole word Python, I need to remember to use the next value in there. So let's pop back to here again and prove that that works. So if I do quote 0 colon 6, I should get the full word Python. If I want to start from the beginning of the string, there's a shortcut you can take which looks like that. In other words, you don't have to put the 0 in if you just want to do from the beginning onwards, which is that, and it gives the same output. Okay, now bearing in mind that I've just got the first word from there, let's pop back to here. If I want the word cool with the exclamation mark at the end as well, so I want this portion of the string now, I predict that I start at 10. I predict that I actually go to 15, knowing what I know about the way that this one behaved here. Let's double check. Let's try that and check that it works okay. So if I go, if I type quote, what did it start at? 10. That's right. And then I go to 15, which I know is the one after the last index. I get cool with the exclamation mark. If I'd have put 14 in there, you would have known 
uh, by now that you won't get the right output from it. It'll miss the exclamation mark off the end. Again, there's a, there's a quicker way of doing it. I can do quote 10 and then a colon with nothing following it and that'll give me from position 10, index 10, right to the end of the string. Obviously, if you want one of the middle sections out of the string, you have to specify both um, positions on there. Right, okay, let's go, that's the first one. That's the structure of strings. Let's go to finding out about strings now and see if we can find out a little bit about strings. One of the super useful um, functions that you can use in Python is the len function that is short for length that gives me the length of the string now what number is it giving me there 15 all right massive mistake people make and the reason i'm telling you this now is because quite often people assume that the last position len gives you the length of the string and it gives you the last position here len actually gives you this one so be very, very careful. It will give you the number of characters, not the index. If I wanted to find out the last position, I'd have to deduct one off the value that len gave back. So if I did len quote minus one, that would always give me that. You see that quite often in scripts. And again, the reason I'm showing you this is because you might look at a script uh, and you might see this bizarre minus one bit going on when you're trying to work through strings or lists or something like that. And that's why, because the len function will always give you back the full length and that's not necessarily um, the last position, it's always one more. Right, you can do some other fancy things as well, so there's other fancy things you can do. You can count the number of times certain substrings appear. For instance, I want to count the number of times an O appears in the uh, in, in quote and it tells me it's three. If I pop back to the canvas you should see that there's three O's in there at position four, at position 11, at position 12. So that's quite a nice little trick as well you can do. Um, you can use the super useful in operator. Now the in operator is a bit like a mathematical operator that you put in between. It's called um, two um, operands, right? You, you put it in the middle of it. So basically, I'll read this to you. It says, uh, tell me, no, it actually says, I think that Python is in the string quote. And if I do that, it gives me true. However, if I say, I think JavaScript is in the string quote, it tells me false because remember, it's not in there. One of these, um, one of the, uh, the useful things you've got to think about here is the fact that um, the in operator will always, will all, whenever you do things like this, you're always making a statement, you're making an assertion that you believe that's true. And Python will tell you whether you're true or not. Right, okay, let's do some more stuff about strings, about finding out about strings. I'm going to set up a few variables here, which are all strings, even though they don't look like strings. They look like numbers, some of them. Um, and this one's 5.3. And this one and y is um, password123, which is obviously everybody's password. And I'm going to set z equal to my name in lowercase, which is mark. Right, the reason I'm doing this is I just need to show you some ways of checking um, the, the type contained within the string. This can be quite useful if you're trying to check whether the user has typed a, a particular value into their program. So for instance, if I wanna, if I, because we all, we, because we know, because we've watched the previous videos to this, when you use the input statement, it always returns a string. But if I wanna check before I try to convert a stringified 53 into a number 53 that they've actually done it, I can use the special is digit. Uh, method of the string, um, which will give me true. In other words, inside that that those quotation marks, there is a digit. All right. Well, it's actually two digits, but you get the idea. Now, what's interesting is if I look at um, x, x looks like um, a digit as well. Okay, so because it's a number, isn't it? So why shouldn't it be? So if I do x dot is digit. Uh, I'd expect it to give me true as well, but it doesn't, it gives me false. And that's because of the presence of the single full stop. Now you, there are ways you can check for a float um, or a decimal number. It's a bit fiddly to be honest, but um, you know, your teacher might show you some of those and I might show you some later on in the course if um, if, if it arises. Right, um, so that's the is, is digit method. There's another one called is al num. Um, and now al num is short for alpha numeric. Alpha is alphabet, numeric is number. So if I do y, which has got password one, two, three in it, dot is al num, it tells me that it's true because it's got numbers and letters in it. And lastly, if I do z dot is alpha 
this will give me true because Z has only got alphabetic characters in it there. Okay, so that's finding out about strings. Um, yeah, probably the that's that's the subset. That's the basic stuff. Let's go for number three, which is altering strings. Now, one of the absolutely crucial things you've got to remember, and th the reason you have to remember this is that all the time people try to do this when they program, is strings are immutable. Now, immutable is a fancy word, which means can't be changed, all right? So in other words, if I can't change what strings, I can I can redefine the string, don't get me wrong, I can I can change the string, but I can't change one letter out of it. I couldn't, I can't alter it, I can't, I can't rem uh, um, remove the exclamation mark from the end of my quote without copying it into a new variable. So they're immutable. So the, the, the fact that I can't change it means there's a limited amount of stuff I can do. However, I can do some fun stuff like this. Oops. I can change the case of strings. And probably the one thing I do with strings most often if, if in a programming environment is change the case of strings. So if I do string.lower, for instance, it'll take all the uppercase letters. There's only one in this. It's just the Python at the beginning. And it'll lowercase it all. Now, again, the reason I do that sometimes is in, in a program is where I've asked the users to type something in and I can't really be sure whether the users put capital letters in it um, so I just want to lowercase it to so that I'm pretty confident that I can compare it to something that I want to compare it to because so it's not because I know it's not got any uppercases in it however I can do this as well so quote.upper um, not surprisingly it's like shouting it will uh, shout and Laura's like whispering so it will do that um, there's another one you can do, which is quote.capitalize. Oh, I've spelt it wrong because I'm not American, funnily enough. And you have to spell it with a Z this or else it won't work. Quote.capitalize uh, will capitalize the beginning letter. Now, this was a bit daft because it's already got a beginning letter. It's got capitalized, but I have a lowercase string. I can, be, I can capitalize the beginning of the sentence. However, this one, quote.title, is quite, is quite nice because that capitalizes every word in the string. Okay. Right, nearly there. Uh, the last thing I want to talk to you about in this um, video, or could be a series of videos, I suppose, is joining strings together. Uh, joining strings is called concatenation. That means joining together. And concatenation is, uh, is just a fancy word that means to join. So if I try to create a full quote, full quote equals, I love programming and right and i i then finish that literal off and i put a little plus sign after it and then i put the variable name in what this will do it will generate a new string called full quote with both those strings joined together okay you may if you've watched some of the other videos you may remember that i've also used the um the print statement to join things together um, I love programming and, right, now I've no space, remember, comma quote, because the print procedure will take um, multiple parameters separated with a comma, and then it introduces a space, remember, love, I love programming in Python, is cool. There's one more, up, up, arrow, enter, that you can do, and that's to put the space in and then include comma sep equals double quote at the end just to make the separator blank and then I get a little bit more control but I add the benefit of typecasting in the variables if I needed to although in this case I'm just using string so I don't. <laughs>